Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. We've got the latest um, potential tropical cyclone 9, otherwise known as Future Helene. That's what it is. We, uh, we talked about this yesterday and I posted about potential tropical cyclone. That's just a generic term for all tropical systems anywhere in the world. Obviously in our neck of the woods, they become hurricanes, but it's just a potential tropical cyclone. So don't get caught up in that name. That just means future Helene. And we can see this morning it is getting a little better organized. Still pretty lopsided, honestly. But you can see the center is right there. A lot of thunderstorms on the east side. A couple things to note. The guidance is really consistent on developing this. This is kind of a, a, a slam dunk of a forecast as far as development. What we're also seeing in the guidance is this is going to become a larger system. So when you start focusing on the, the hurricane tracks, Remember, that's where the center is going to be, not where the impacts are going to be. Oftentimes, I will post the track and people go, oh, it's going to miss us. It's going west. It's going east. And I'm like, no, you're still within several hundred miles of the center. You're going to see significant impacts, especially on the east side. The best way I can equate this to you is I posted this yesterday. It's like being in front of a Mack truck coming at you and only worrying about where the hood ornament goes and not the rest of the truck. The rest of the truck's important, okay? And when you see these tracks, it's just where the center is, not where the impacts. And as we know, this is a large system. In fact, this is a good example of the system right now. The track is where the L is, right? That's where it's going. It's not tracking this big gigantic blob off to the east, and that's what's gonna hit most of Florida and eventually hit up here into the Carolinas. Now, the track is pretty straightforward as we go ahead towards the Gulf Coast. But I want to show you something that's a real big concern. Because of where it's hitting in Florida, this area, this concave shape of the coast, very storm surge prone area. Water gets pushed in here. And as the storm gets bigger, it actually pushes more water. And when I'm bigger, I mean in size, not just intensity. Think of it as a bulldozer. It's a bigger blade pushing more water. So as the system gets much bigger here in the Gulf of Mexico, it can push a lot more water. And this area, because of the shape, everything gets funneled in there. So you're seeing 10 to 15 feet of storm surge. And even though the center might be up here, look at the storm surge all the way to the Florida Keys. This is why focusing on the center is a problem. People in Ian unfortunately lost their lives because they focused on the center and not the storm surge. The surge will be well down the coast. So I really want to reiterate how important it is to not focus on the center of the storm. OK, this is going to be a large system that impacts a lot of people. Let's quickly show you the track here. And again, as I'm doing this, we should be getting a new track here momentarily. I'm going to put the track out here um, and we'll put the track out in the future. So again, the, the forecast of the center is to take it towards the Big Bend area, possibly as a category three storm and then up into eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina. Now, because Charlotte and Columbia and all these areas east aren't in it, you're thinking, Again, you're not in it. You are because all that moisture on the east side is going to get pushed. So everybody in here, significant rainfall, okay? Flash flood risk is huge. Now, the other thing I'm watching, how fast the storm is moving and how strong could carry strong winds well inland. So that's something to keep an eye on. So if we go back to the, the forecast here, a couple things to notice here. I'm going to kind of show you the steering currents. I'm going to pause it right here. Um, this is basically going 72 hours. I will back it up just a hair. Let me grab my cursor here just for a second. A um, little sense of keep touching up there. So we'll back this up just a hair right about right here. So a couple things to notice. We've got low pressure over Memphis, Tennessee. We've got high pressure off the East Coast and the Florida coast. Clockwise flow around high pressure is pushing this. This has got counterclockwise pressure like that around low pressure. So the system wants to go like that. The problem is the system can't go east because of this high. And because this low is cut off, it's going to retrograde or push west. And you'll see this in the forecast. As it pushes west, it's going to tug on Helene and pull it back to the west. Maybe a little what we call Fujiwara effect where they orbit around each other. But you can see how it kind of pulls it back to the west. I'm going to stop it right here. Back it up one frame. So the high here is going to block it from going east. And because this trough is too far to the northeast underneath my head here, it's got to kind of hang out and get pulled back to the west. Now, the other thing that's going on here, because this is a high pressure system right here, you've got a stalled front across the area, the low pressure here. You're just getting a ton of moisture, all getting funneled in to the Appalachian Mountains. So if you're in the mountains and foothills, this is a huge setup for heavy rain, regardless 
of the tropical system. Even if you took that thing, the, the tropical system out of there, with that upper low there, the high there, and the trough there, we would have upslope flow into the mountains and would cre create a ton of rain. So this is a high impact rain event regardless. And that upper low kind of meanders over us for the weekend and keeps scatter showers in the forecast all the way until early next week. So let's go back to the map here and I'm going to show you the future cast here just to show you what this will look like. All right, let's jump right into the future cast here because you can see the system is moving north. And again, one I, I will reiterate this probably till the end of my career. Do not focus on where that center is. I mean, I know it's hard to. I want you to really focus on where the impacts are. So the cone is going to track this, the center, like that. But I want you to look. The impacts from the storm are this wide. So if this shifts to the west, let's say, couple hundred miles it takes this a couple hundred miles to the west but that still puts all of florida and the carolinas on the worst side or in the heavy rain band so it's really important when you look at this to kind of focus on the rain and the impacts um, and you could see as we get into tomorrow and thursday look at the heavy rain already setting up in the mountains remember the flow these isobars are showing you the flow of air it's all heading into the mountains okay so while this is sitting down here it's just a big uh gear in the atmosphere or cog pushing moisture towards the Carolinas. We've got a stalled front. We've got an upper low here. So there's a lot of things pushing water or moisture into the Carolinas. And that's why if you focus on the track, you go, ah, it's going to miss us. Remember, that's just the center. All of these other things are pushing a ton of moisture into the Carolinas. So you can see on Thursday, the rain chances are really going to ramp up. In fact, heavy rain could be ongoing most of Thursday. And that's my concern that this isn't just a one day event that the rain, even today, tomorrow, and Thursday, kind of saturates things. And then the mother load of rain comes in on Friday and just pushes everything over the top. So you can see, you know, this is basically on Friday morning, you know, we're looking at a ton of moisture coming in here. This is midnight Friday morning. We go into the early morning. Now look at all that rain. Now, again, wherever the low is, there's likely going to be strong winds here. I haven't even got into the winds. The winds will definitely be an issue if it's very strong and moving fast inland, doesn't give it time to wind down. And anytime you get a tropical system in mountains, the winds stay elevated because winds are higher in the upper elevation. So um, yeah, definitely something you got to keep a close eye on wind speeds. That's a little less certain than the rain. The rain is a slam dunk here. So as you go through time, look at all that rain. This is Friday. I mean, that is an absolute deluge. And I also want you to notice, even if you're not in my area, look how wide the swath of heavy rain is. I mean, it's pretty wide. So even a shift this way, or even honestly this way a little bit, isn't going to change this all that much. It's only on the edges. So if you're over here, the slight changes mean a lot. And if you're over here, they mean a lot. But if you're anywhere in here, even 100 mile shift east-west doesn't really change the impacts all that much. So that's why focusing on that center can really, really be problematic. And you can see going through Friday morning, Friday afternoon, into Friday night. If there's some good news, I think by Friday night and Saturday, the worst could be out of here. So to me, the worst is Thursday, late in the day. This is Thursday. Thursday evening into Friday, the first half. So maybe half of Thursday and the first half of Friday look really, really bad. So let's talk about precipitation because this is the future cast winds right now. Uh, it only goes out 72 hours. I, I'll probably talk more about wind as we get closer. Um, but I want you to focus on, on, on the rain. Super ensembles, just like to show you this, all the models are in agreement here on where this is going. There's not a lot of fluctuation in the guidance. I don't focus on specific models. I use super ensembles, blends. This is the way you forecast. The, the storm's gonna be somewhere in there as far as center. So let's get into the rainfall. I'm gonna start wide. This is, uh, we'll start wide first. I'll come back to this graphic. This is the whole Southeast. Look at that swath of heavy rain. And again, I think people in Florida, Southern Georgia know there's going to be a ton of rain, but let's focus in on the Carolinas where I'm based. Look at these totals, folks. Um, these areas in purple and, you know, a darker purple are anywhere from 7 to 12 inches of rain right there. And even in Charlotte, this is Charlotte and Rock Hill, 5 inches of rain, okay? It's a lot of rain, guys. It's a lot of rain. And again, you kind of see the pattern here. Because the low is just to our west or over us, the flow of moisture hits the mountains. The mountains act like a stalled front. 
the elevation lifts that tropical moisture and squeezes out every drop. This is called orographic lift. So on the eastern or southeastern facing slopes, you get a ton of heavy rain. Think about in the winter when we talk about northwest flow when cold air is coming in from the northwest and the western and northwestern facing slopes get snow. This is the tropical equivalent of that. Warm moist air coming from the southeast hits the mountains and you get southeast flow uh, rainfall, not snowfall in this case. And some of it could be absolutely off the charts. So you throw that in combination with the terrain, you get a lot of flash flood risk. Some of these higher purples on the eastern facing slopes around the south side and east side of Asheville, Mount Mitchell, up towards Grandfather Mountain, you're looking at a foot of rain. In fact, the max here is 11.92 inches of rain. So that's really, really heavy. I'll zoom in one more time closer to Charlotte just to show you. This is Hickory right there, eight inches. This is Wilkes County up here. This is towards the Greensboro, Winston-Salem market, four to six. So you could see as the elevation ramps up, and this is about where the Piedmont and the foothills start, you start to see a steady ramp up. We go from about 700 feet of elevation to about 1,100 to about three to 6,000 feet. So that steady ramp up creates a lot of rainfall. So that, that is a huge, huge potential for, for flooding here. I, I quickly looked at the winds. This only goes through Friday um, midnight. Um, right now, I would expect gust maybe to 50 or 60 miles per hour in here. Certainly something I'm keeping a close eye on, but the rainfall to me, this this honestly is the big story right now. So make sure you're staying weather aware um, on Thursday into Friday. Flash flooding is our primary concern. Wind is our secondary concern, and that means power outages and trees down. So stay weather aware. I will continue to post updates, but this is going to be a big rain event. It's just a matter of how much and how long it lasts. So very little um, uncertainty now in the rainfall. The uncertainty right now is honestly still in the amount uh, of wind. So folks in Florida, you should be heeding local evacuation orders for sure. Uh, this system definitely means business. Every time I look at the, uh, the track here into the Big Bend area, huge, huge storm surge potential here. And again, can't emphasize this enough. That is going to be a big, big storm surge event.